All right, where are we going? Well, that's way over there. Yeah, that's down here. Okay. Go try to pick this up, I guess. Where exactly is that? That's over there in those ruins. Got it. I can't get my chocobo. Damn it! Ah! <laughs> All right. This is for, yeah, the spherical echoes. I forgot about this. We'll just do this while we're here. I'll need to deal with these ones first. That's getting one down. Right then. Uh, what else do we have to do? So we can't get down here. Do I have to go through the left side there? If so, let's just go back here to the Dallin Mill Inn. And we can finish up this quest, I think. It's right here, right? Why do they always have to make such a Yes. You all along the Forgive me for disturbing you, but could I have a moment of your time? Hmm. I've seen your face before. As have I, Lord Underhill, wasn't it? Of the League of Merchants. Uh, that's right. I wanted to speak to you about Lubor. The rumors that he's a bearer. All true, I'm afraid. He'll never be mayor now. Not if I have anything to do with it. But what if his wares? Bearer or no, his steel is highly valued throughout the Republic. In this, at least, he's done the town a service. Might that not earn him a little leniency? Leniency? He pretended to be one of us when he was laughing behind our backs all the while. I'm sorry, my lord, but he lied to us. He lied to you. He cannot be trusted. So what do you propose? Will you drive him from his home? close his forge perhaps that is a question for the people of dalamil 
and they will thank you not to get involved. The townsfolk have made their minds up. There was nothing I could do. Nor I. Conrad and Natalie refused to consider anything but their own wounded pride. You never know. Once their anger is cooled, they might see things differently. For now, we should report back to Lumbor. All right. All right. Why the hell would Victor take the bearers? I assume the situation is hopeless. There's still hope. But... But, perhaps not in this lifetime, I think it's fair to say. You mustn't think like that, Lubo. Give them time. They'll come around. We'll talk some sense into them in the end, you'll see. No, you won't. And your efforts would be better spent elsewhere. But Lubo... Rosina would often tell me... That steel does not lie. That a blade is a reflection of the smith who forged it. If yourself be true, that was her point. Rather an ironic one when you consider that her life was taken with a blade of her own making. But I do not doubt that she was always true to herself and what she believed in right to the end. And so must I be. I must do what I know to be right no matter what others might think of me. And now, I know what that is. I must embrace my new role of villain so that the people of Dalamil have something to unite against. For only united can they hope to stand against the threat that awaits them. I'll need to make a suitably dramatic exit, of course. Don't go, Lubor. You're the only one who was ever kind to us. We'll be all alone. Again. Trust me, little ones. It is for the best that I go. Not only for the town, but for you, too. How could it possibly be for the best? These children need you. The least you can do is give the townspeople a chance to change their minds. They would not take it, Victor. It's over. Over, you say? And so just like that, you're going to throw this town and these children to the wolves? I thought you were better than this. But it seems you had me fooled as well. Victor. Forget it. Do what you will. You sure you're making the right choice, Lubo? Of those available to me, I believe it's the best one. Yes. Ah, but where are my manners? Here. A reward for clearing out that bandit camp. Right then. I have packing to do. If there's anything I can do. Anything. I'll bear it in mind. Thank you. Okay then. <laughs> Uncompelling, but we'll take it. Okay, uh, well that's done, which is good. All right, let's go down here and try to uh, figure out this. Faster. Oop, wrong way, almost. <laughs> All right, so we'll go over here. And I think this will let us go to where we want, hopefully. Oh, boy. Fight. Yeah, I was talking. I was talking to some people about this game and like how I think promisingly it starts and how it weakens over the course of the game. And I still 
you know, I, I'm still all the superlatives I said about this game, how it pays homage to the classics and like the the political intrigue and stuff. All of that stuff I still really enjoy. Uh, I actually really like the characters in this game for the most part as well. My my biggest issue with the game really is just I I feel like it stops evolving like halfway through. And, and what I mean by that is, like, a lot of the political intrigue gets dropped in favor of this, like, shonen power-up uh, stuff uh, that we see with Clive and his abilities. Uh, and obviously, Ultima and Barnabas are just, like, they're just, like, non-characters. They, they, at least so far, they're not very interesting. Uh, they don't really have ideology. They're just evil. Um, and when they spout their ideology, they're like... Death becomes all. Yay. It's like, all right, that's dumb. Like, that doesn't mean anything. It's useless. This is stupid. Why would you believe this? Uh, and even their, like, pontification on, uh, on the topic of, like, divinity and stuff, like, just doesn't really hold water. Um, and the game just, it's re so reliant on, on big moments and storytelling that, but it can't really back it up because it has no connective tissue. So that's kind of weak. But I just wish the mechanics got more in depth. That battle evolved over time. The RPG mechanics were kind of lessened in favor of the action stuff. Because the RPG mechanics as they are in this game are just profoundly underdeveloped. And there's no reason to have them. Like, we've got we've gone this whole game getting uh, crafting resources that we can't use. And it's not because I've skipped crafting. We can't use them because I've crafted everything and there's nothing else to craft. Uh, and it's just like, I think maybe some of that could have been fixed uh, by one, letting us upgrade accessories more. That would have been great. Uh, giving us maybe status or elemental effects on weapons. Uh, we already have a, a seemingly fleshed out elemental system in the game with the different uh, icons that we can um, aspect, but the way that it seems like switching our actual elemental affinity doesn't do anything. It doesn't seem like we take less damage from fire or deal fire damage when we're using, you know, Phoenix or whatever. Uh, when we switch to Titan, we might shoot rocks, but it doesn't seem like it does any more damage to enemies. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's just a really small difference, but a lot of these mechanics just don't seem very fleshed out. Uh, and as a result, it kind of flattens combat in a way that's really boring. And I think part of that probably stems from, you know, obviously they don't want to scare off the people who play JRPGs and are just here for the story. But it just, I think it actually ends up limiting the storytelling potential because Stories are more than just what the cutscenes tell you. They're also the story that the game is constructing by how you play it. And uh, it introduces like a lot of like dissonance and, and ludonarrative lack of cohesion and stuff like that. When, uh, you know, Clive is supposed to be this, this infinite badass who's gaining all these new powers. And I'm ultimately just using the same powers that I've used the whole game, fighting enemies that I've fought the whole game. Uh, it just, it, I think it weakens some of the gameplay tension and, and ruins the justification for doing certain things, right? Oh fuck, I'm out of potions. Oh fuck, okay, that's bad. Okay, okay, yikes. Stagger, and then I do this. That. Throw one of these out. Oh, that didn't impair. 
embarrassingly small amount of damage. have to. I'm gonna have to use... Oh, oh I forgot we channeled Shiva. Uh, I'm gonna have to... I guess just go ahead and use an elixir. Don't really want to do that, but that's fine. should have put out aerial blast first i think that's what i should do is always go for aerial blast because maybe it will tick down while the enemies are frozen still should have stayed in the past these must be cyril's colleagues you have our thanks, stranger. Who are you? Ah, forgive me, my lord. I did not recognize you. You are Lord Rosfield, are you not? We are archaeologians tasked with surveying this site. When the echoes appeared, our brothers here occupied their attentions. Thanks to them and to you. We were, for a mercy, able to see our duty to its conclusion. You call that a mercy? Your brothers might still be alive if you put their safety before your duty. Surely this survey wasn't worth dying for. We are charged with uncovering Ultima's origins. A duty of the highest import, as I'm sure you will agree. And you think your dead brothers would agree with you too? I know they would. They gave their lives for the cause, an honor to which all undying aspire. Now, to what do we owe the honor of your presence, Lord Marquis? Cyril told me of your work here, and I agree to collect your findings in his stead. I see. That is most kind. Pray, take them then, with our humble thanks. May the Firebird's flame burn ever in your heart. As it does in ours. Nice. We did it. Alright. One thing to lay down your life for another. Go back here and but for a survey. Go back to Cyril. Let's get that turned in. Definitely need to buy more stuff. It in here? No. It's back here. Okay. Ah, oh, you are returned, my lord. I collected your colleagues' preliminary findings. Here, take them. All right, a scroll containing the preliminary findings of the Undying's ill-starred venture into the ruins of Kretov, sealed with the wax imprint of a phoenix feather. My thanks. 
I shall study them and inform you forthwith if I discover aught that might aid you in your fight against Ultima. Cyril, your survey party suffered several losses in Kratov. Losses which could have been avoided had the others not chosen to complete their work instead of saving their friends. Were these your orders? No. This was their choice. Every Undying devotes his life to the service of the Phoenix. It is our sole duty. And should we die in discharging it, so be it. Even when death is avoidable. My lord, I fear that this is not a point over which it would be fruitful to argue. The Undying have served the Phoenix for countless generations. And your opinion of our methods, however earnest, is not like to change them. We live to serve the Phoenix. Our very order exists for that purpose, and that purpose alone. Cyril, I know that you and your brethren answer only to Joshua, but allow me to offer you a word of advice. It does not further the cause of the Phoenix to have his loyal followers surrender their lives without good reason. Provide your survey parties with an escort, that they might live to do their duty for years to come. Think not only of how you can serve the Phoenix, but how Joshua would want you to serve him. Please, for all our sakes. I thank you for your advice, my lord. If you will permit me to respond, our faith in his grace, Joshua Rossfield, is absolute. And we of the Undying will do what we believe is right to fulfill our duty unto him. As first shield to the Phoenix, I am sure you understand what it means to do one's duty. I do. Then we are of the same mind. And it is my hope that we may continue to do our duty together. All right. I wonder if a lot of these side quests are gated not because they make more sense in the narrative at this particular moment, but because their rewards were determined before the side quest was, and it wouldn't make sense to give you an accessory that's for Shiva before you have Shiva unlocked. It's kind of what it feels like. Uh, what do we need to do? I guess we'll go up here to Northreach. We need to buy potions. I need to remember to buy potions. Let's do that really quick. And what can I do for you? You've a keen eye. An excellent choice. You've a keen eye. Is there anything else to really buy? Anything meaningfully? Nope. I do like a customer who knows what he wants. I'm just buying random stuff to buy it. Why? Yeah, let's go over here and grab what I assume, yeah, is this spherical echo. Oh, oops, I just went the wrong way. I also didn't even realize that was a section of the map. <laughs> The 
This might take a while. Straight oh, no. Now. That's not what I want to hear, Clive. I want it to go quickly. Get him. Another spherical one that can feel. go up here it's annoying that the quest marker disappears when it literally does mark where the thing is two down one to go Back to North Reach. Guess it's in here. There were ghosts at the gates, not days. Ghosts. You needn't fret. The creatures have been. I do like that the world state seems to change and characters like, you know, talk about world events and stuff. I just also wish there was kind of more going on there. We're still alive, aren't we? The game world feels surprisingly dead. Uh, and like, I'm not saying we need, you know, AI generated crowds or, or huge groups of people, but like, it is what it is. Oh, Clive, what am I to do? My wards and I may soon be without a home. What's happened? The High Cardinal has descended from his lofty throne and taken up residence here in Northreach. The High Cardinal? Leader of the Council of Elders, second only to his radiance at the head of the Imperial government. Not that any of those things still exist. Now he goes by his noble title, the Duke of Oriflam. And what does he want with Northreach? He wants to transform it into a military stronghold. A foundation upon which to build a new Sambrek. He's already secured the support of the various army remnants. With promises that they shall be afforded the respect they deserve in his empire. One built on the confiscated property of the people. He would rob the populace to pay for it. Believe me. I have used every means of persuasion to discourage him from this folly. But for whatever reason, he will not listen to me. What does Captain Philippe make of this? When the town was under attack, it was him the soldiers rallied around. Couldn't he use that influence again? How? By speaking out against one of the most powerful men in Sambrec. A man whose stated aim is to revive the Empire Philippe's comrades swore to serve, and to improve the soldiers' lot within it. 
The captain can offer them a regular supply of gruel and an occasional trip to the Vale to help them forget the terrors they face each day. The Duke offers them a vision of strength and safety. No. Any attempt to incite mutiny would cost Philippe the support of his men, if it did not cost him his life. But given the mood around town, mutiny may yet be unavoidable. The people have little appetite for further deprivation, leastable when it serves only to elevate others. Who could blame them? Clive, would you appeal to the Duke on my behalf? For your services to Northreach, you have the respect of the soldiers, and they will take you to his eminence if you ask them. And unlike Philippe, no bonds of loyalty prevent you from speaking your mind to the man. Well, will you try? You could hardly fare any worse than I did. All right. I'll see what I can do. Thank you, Clive. Tell me then, where will I find this Duke of Oriflam? In the garrison? Overseeing the troops, yes. All right. Wish me luck. All right. Right over there. I may have met this dude before at the remembrance ceremony. Let's hope I didn't make a strong impression. Those things I said before. about that you're the dames man aren't you you got some business with the captain no actually with the duke i was hoping i might be able to speak with him we're under orders not to let any civilians pass but you should be all right his eminence has heard all about you and your heroics wait here i'll go and ask So, you are the sellsword who lent his aid to the garrison. The Empire owes you a debt, and I shall see it repaid. But tell me, is it wealth that you seek, or favor? Neither, Your Eminence. I thought only to inquire about your plan to turn Northreach into a stronghold. Ah, I see. You are worried the expanded garrison will render your services redundant. Yet you needn't be. A proud fighting man like yourself shall always have a place here. Pride of place, in fact. For too long has the contribution of the noble soldier been underreckoned, But no more. For it is they who shall see the Holy Empire rebuilt, beginning right here in Northreach. Why here, your eminence? The town has been fortunate enough to escape largely unscathed from the recent troubles. Her defenses are sound and her garrison well prepared. Which is more than can be said for Oriflam or Twinside. The Empire wants for a capital and I believe Northreach to be the perfect place. With Care Norvant as her citadel. Once we have seen to the refortification of both the town and the castle, we need only build a wall around both to create a city that would be the envy of the twins. <sighs> Plans are already underway for the construction. Soon enough, these thralls shall learn that they are no match for the might of Sandbreck. I fear you underestimate how dangerous these creatures are, Your Eminence. Should they return in force, you will need all the people of Northreach to come together in defense of the town. Something they may be loath to do if they've been deprived of their worldly goods. 
The people will do as their leaders command. If Sandbrek is to be rebuilt, she will require a functioning government. One whose authority is beyond question. That is why this levy is necessary. So that any man who wishes to join the army might do so and be fed, outfitted and paid as befits a defender of the Empire. <sighs> and yet there are those who persist in peddling the treasonous lie that I seek to steal from the people and drive them from their homes. I suspect they're afraid of losing what little they have left. Precisely. The common folk have little and less, and you mean to deprive them of even that. You would sow the seeds of your new empire in your own salted earth. Sabine, we have discussed this. Yes, and I told you then how putting the empire before her citizens would lead only to revolt. Without an empire, there are no citizens. And in yours, there will be yes. only beggars. Is that what Griga wills for her people? <laughs> Do not take her name in vain, Sabine. I'll come back later. The citizens revolt. I wonder what the people really think of the Duke's plan. It wouldn't hurt <coughs> to ask them, I suppose. Let's begin with those on the other side of the wall. Okay. Uh, where do we want to go? I guess we go back out. Is it going to be faster to just teleport? I guarantee you it is. Yep. <laughs> I've been hearing a lot of talk about a certain duke. Nothing good, I'll wager. Going around acting like he owns the place. And with hardly a word to the dame. This is her town, not his. I take it you'd rather she was in charge. As far as I'm concerned, she still is. Just need his eminence to sod off back to Oriflam. Hmm. Why? Okay. Gonna be that guy? Sure is. Give me your secret, stable hand. A question, if you don't mind. What do you think of the Duke of Oriflam? Don't get me started. You build a life for yourself somewhere, earning for some noble to turn up and tell you you've got to hand it all over to him. If he thinks his name and his chains give him the right to empty our purses, he's in for a rude awakening. We'll do whatever it takes to keep what's ours. Whatever it takes. Okay. I heard the dame got an eye concert with the man. All right there. What is it you're after, sir? Just your opinion, actually. I wondered what you thought of the Duke of Oriflam. <laughs> oh, him. Not much. None of us traders do. It's thanks to nobles like him that we had to set up shop this side of the wall in the first place. Couldn't have the rabble getting any closer to the holy capital, could they? And now he's trying to drive us out completely, threatening to take everything we got from us if we don't clear off. If the dame said she wanted him run out of town, I'll be straight through that checkpoint tar bucket in hand. Well, the people seem united enough. What about the soldiers? All right. I like that guy's armor. Days ago, I want a I want a Final Fantasy protagonist that just looks like this guy. I would. Right here. And I <laughs> you needn't fret. The creep just have been dealt with. Hmm. Here we go. You. You're the one who was talking to his eminence. On the dame's behalf, yes. I was trying to persuade him not to take the people's goodwill for granted, but it seems my words fell on deaf ears. What do you think of his plans? I'm a soldier, mate. He tells me what to do, not the other way round. Listen, I've got nothing but respect for the dame, but I've got a family to look after. That's where my loyalties lie, 
not with a town or the Empire, but with my wife and children. If the Duke can get us some men and the equipment we need to fight off those blue-skinned bastards, I don't care how he does it. Okay. I left everything. As oh. long as you remain. I wish some of these characters had more character. <laughs> I hear the Duke of Oriflam plans to turn this town into some sort of fortress. Do you think that's a good idea? It's not for me to say. All I know is that unless the Emperor orders me otherwise, his eminence's word is law. Look, no one likes all these taxes and tariffs, but empires don't come for free. Once Sambrek is back on her feet, we'll all reap the benefits. Right over here. Oh, it's this guy. Excuse me, do you have a moment? I wondered if you'd mind sharing your thoughts on the Duke of Oriflam. Well, <laughs> he's made a lot of enemies coming in the way he did. I mean, look around us. You can see the state the realm's in. The traders might not like having the screws put on them, but if they volunteered a few more of their hard-earned gill before things got bad, maybe they wouldn't have to. I think the Duke's got a point when he says rebuilding the Empire is the best way of making sure we're all protected. And if that means people who don't know one end of a sword from another have to make way for those who do, well, that's just how it goes. Interesting. Hmm. Let's see what Philippe makes of all this. Not necessarily a unrelatable or uh, not unrelatable. Uh, it's understandable why someone would come to that conclusion. Maybe it's not correct, but you can at least understand why a common person in this particular setting would believe that. Especially when there are literal magic and monsters around. You? Certainly. Clive, wasn't it? Thank you for last time. How can I help you? I wanted to ask you about the Duke of Oriflam. Do you intend to go along with his plan? But to tell you the truth, I'm in two minds. It's my sworn duty as a captain of the Imperial Army to obey his orders. But I can't say I agree with him. Philippe. I remember you saying that you became a soldier to protect the people you loved. The dame included. That's right. I did. Well, she doesn't agree with the Duke's orders either. She thinks they could tear Northreach apart. <sighs> and she's probably right. Thank you, Clive. I know what I need to do now. Protecting the people I love is what matters. Doesn't matter how. Well, duty calls, so I better go. Thanks again. It seems Philippe wants to do the right thing at least. I expect Isabel will be pleased to hear that, if nothing else. It's Pet Tour. <sighs> we haven't done this in a while. Oh my god. Pet. <laughs> Is Torgo's fur changing color? Is it getting more brown? Let's look at his attributes. Have we leveled up Rampage yet? Or Ravage? I keep calling it Rampage. We have not. We're so close. I wish it gave us more details about it rather than saying it gets better as it increases because that much is obvious. <laughs> of course it gets better as it increases. Ah, oh, 
Ah, Clive. How did you fare? Were you able to speak with the Duke? I was, but... So Northreach is to be a fortress after all. Well, it will certainly help to hold back the thralls. There's no denying that. Though I doubt it will come as much consolation to the townspeople whose worldly goods are confiscated to pay for it. They deserve to be heard, Clive. To have a say in this new empire the Duke means to build. Sadly, his eminence values their obedience more than their opinions and hopes to reassert the authority of the state. I fear he sees the people as mere pawns on his chessboard to be sacrificed for the greater good. Needless to say, they themselves are of a different opinion, and would rather their destinies were in your hands. The soldiers, meanwhile, are content to follow their orders. And not just because of the Duke's rank, but because of his vision. I thought as much. Had I sworn to protect Sambrek, I dare say I too would want nothing more than to see it rise from the ashes. Thank you for trying, but the battle is lost. I don't know about that. What happened to your uniform? I handed it in, along with my resignation. Told the lads I wished them well, but that I owe it to those I love to call it a day. But why? Because I realized what really matters to me. Not following some nobleman's orders for the sake of it, but protecting what I care about. Protecting Northreach. I honestly don't know when those monsters will return, but I'm certain they're not finished with us yet. And when they do come back, we need to be ready for them. We need to stand together, all of us. And with you to lead us, my lady, I reckon we can do it. It was you who finally convinced me, Clive. There's no point following orders if they go against everything you believe. Indeed. All of us, standing together. That has always been Northreach's best hope, and one which still lies within our grasp. We have only to turn our attentions to the true enemy. Thank you, Philippe, for showing me what I must do. Anything for you, milady. Speaking of uh, standing together, would you mind if I borrowed a few of the lads from the Vale to help keep watch around the town? I fear his eminence has loftier tasks in mind for the guard. Not at all. Be my guest. Wouldn't be the first time. There may be hope for Northreach yet. Especially with men like you and Philippe to champion our cause. I, for my part, shall continue to work upon the Duke in the stubborn belief that I might still tempt him into joining hands. All right. I suspect I shall have to call upon your aid again. I guess it makes sense. Until then, Clive. I mean, Until obviously, then. every single side quest in the game is gonna end with this sort of like happy, like, let's unite against the bad guy plot, but it's just a little bit, you know, <laughs> a little saccharine, but that's fine. I wish there was more conflict in some of these stories in the sense of like characters uh, reaching different points rather than always finding conciliation. Uh, that's why I really like the eye for an eye quest so much with Charon because she was like, no, fuck you. <laughs> like, no, you're dead. That's it. I'm, I'm ending you because it is the way that it is. Or like, you know, she's gonna, she's gonna maim them or whatever because, yeah, revenge, baby. Sometimes, sometimes that's what, what they need. So it's just kind of, eh, you know, it is a little, a little weak, but it's fine. All right, I guess we'll go to Lost Plume next.